Hello, I am going to present to you the 20% time process. Um, I like the 20% time uh, simply because it, what better way to promote a PBL project or integrate a PBL project because students have voice and choice. Students have time to reflect on their learning. Students uh, will be critiquing and revising their learning. Um, it's just so many things where this could incorporate a student-centered learning environment for students. So that's why I like the 20% time. Uh, so let's get to it. Um, when we look at the 20% time, we are looking at how Google simply started this policy at their institution where they allow their employees uh, time to work uh, and to be innovative on something else that's outside of their current project. So it's uh, outside of what they do during their normal day. Uh, this 20% uh, time, it, it uh, is this innovative concept is finding its way into student-centered classrooms today. And that's really what I like about it. Um, so there are guidelines, so let's look at some of those. When we look at our guidelines, we are really looking at how to run a 20% time, and this is not the uh, screen that I want, but we're looking at how to run a 20% uh, program, 20% time program. And when we do that, it really starts with communication. So you want to communicate to your stakeholders when you're doing this for the first time exactly or when your uh, stakeholders, if kids are in your classroom, you want to communicate to them exactly what they're going to be doing. Therefore, back to school night or open house night, uh, these would be great platforms to get buy-in for your 20% time and to expose the community exactly the type of learning that you're going to be introducing to the students. This light bulb here, it represents ideas simply because students having the right idea for their project is going to be very important. And an activity that works well uh, for getting these ideas uh, out of the kid's mind and onto paper is the uh, bad idea, good idea factory. The Bad Idea, Good Idea Factory is an excellent activity for students to simply brainstorm uh, their ideas. Whether it's a good idea, whether it's a bad idea, they're writing these things down on whiteboard, chart paper, in various areas of the room, and then they're coming together to actually state, okay, why is this a good idea, or what makes this a bad idea? And so they're having a discussion about this to stimulate uh, their thinking as to which direction they want to go. The other uh, piece to the 20% time is really going it alone, is what they call it. Students can work in groups or they could work individually. And this is okay because we have to remember that this is their idea. This is their passion. This is what they're excited about. The other piece that I like about the 20% time is simply the project proposal. The project proposal is very important because execution matters when we have students working on these projects. And this will be the student's roadmap to keeping them accountable um, for their, and keeping them accountable and keeping them on time, uh, some of the competencies with uh, students need to, to learn for their project. They are in their uh, project proposal, they're going to be developing partnerships with the community and this is a way to invite uh, the community in and this is what the students will be doing. On our next slide, uh, we're continuing with the 20% time uh, uh, program, the process. Part of it is mentoring. Students need mentors when they start these projects, uh, getting experts involved, uh, going back to back to school night, getting that buy-in. This is why you need to get the community involved because the, com the community uh, is full of expertise that may be outside of your purview as the teacher. You may not have any idea of how to start a project, but the kids uh, will be 
reaching out to the community. These people will be coaching them. And this is a good way to start those students writing those formal letters in order to make the connections with the community. Blogging. I love this component simply because this is, in order to get kids to be good at writing, they need to write regularly. And blogging is one way of doing that. This is where they're going to write about their journey uh, for their 20% time project. This is where they're going to be curating uh, data, note taking uh, on their next steps, and also adjusting, uh, making adjustments as to what they uh, need to make, uh, what's working, what's not working, uh, etc. The over here we have the elevator pitch. This is important too because you want the students to have a 30 second elevator pitch to establish their problem and to explain how they're going to solve it. With this elevator pitch, they will be getting feedback from their peers first and then the teacher. This area over here is really the piece where we make this whole thing a big deal. And it's called the uh, best five minutes of their life. This is where students are going to share their learning. It could be at a conference. It could be uh, at an assembly at the school. If it's a grade level, they, uh, you can have an assembly where grade levels are showing what they're learning. And this is really important for students because this really holds them accountable because they know that they're going to be accountable to a larger audience. So this is an important piece of the 20% time. Uh, we need to realize, students need to know that failure is going to be part of that. And we as teachers need to know that too, because it's not going to work right the first time, not all the time, but for the students, it builds that tenacity. It also uh, allows them to learn new skills. Uh, and they're going to be creating new strategies on how to think, how to do things. It's going to be promoting crucial practices, things that students need to uh, practice and learn and be able to do. Um, but I like this piece, what it does here is they're going to be finding out who they are and how they like to work. I mean, this is really, you know, those competencies are really strong in these type of platforms. The other item that I want to bring to mind will be summarizing everything up. And so what I just said is you need to have a process. You need to get those ideas going. Uh, remember that students can work individually. Uh, they can work in groups. Um, and failure is all a part of it. You want to promote those ideas. You want to promote students' ideas. You want to get them excited about the learning. And understanding that failure is a part, all a part of the learning process and experience that they're going to gain in their passion and their idea. And here are some resources that you have access to. Just simply, um, when you click on uh, these resources here, uh, they will take you to a link uh, where you can see exactly, uh, get more information on each of these images. So thank you for listening, and I hope this was helpful.